Good morning. This is Artie, the Vintage Stitcher. I am so happy that you are here with me today. Um, I'm going to teach you how to make a strawberry. These are so much fun. Um, and they're so quick and easy to make. Uh, you, you can crank out dozens of these in no time. And you can make them all different sizes. And you can make them to kind of go with your, you know, your cross stitch work. You can make them. I love making them in like these little vintage style fabrics and just having them tucked in, in my baskets, in my shelves, um, in my dough bowl, just as accent pieces. But, you know, I've seen a lot of them with your cross stitch pieces on them and they come in all different shapes and sizes. So... I'm going to show you the technique on how to make them and then if you're making a strawberry like from a pattern they are going to give you the size and the pattern piece to go with it um, so that it, it fits the the fabric that is called for in the pattern and they're very very easy now I just stuff mine with polyfill like the fluff but these if you wanted to make these into pin cushions you could definitely use the um, lizard litter or the crushed walnuts and that is going to give it that um, pin cushion where it sharpens your needles and you can definitely do that generally I just make them with polyfill because I'm just using them as decorative pieces or like ornaments that sort of thing so this is one that I have made years and years ago um, so I'm going to show you the basics of that so what I have is I have my fabric just a piece of fabric that or your cross stitch piece and your pattern okay and it's not quite it's like a third of a circle <laughs> I am terrible at geometry so bear with me on this one um a third of a circle maybe I don't know I don't I have no idea what that angle is so I um very much rely on the designers to help me <laughs> with my pattern all right and you can get these online you can get them on Pinterest whatever but this is how I do mine when I am doing a strawberry you are manip or you're manipulating that fabric a lot okay and you're pushing on that fabric a lot in this case I would use a medium to heavy weight interfacing okay it's going to give that fabric a little bit of stability because we are going to be sewing it, we're going to be stuffing it, we're going to be yanking on it, we're going to be pulling on it. You do not want to distort your stitches. You want it to be a nice, firm fabric. You want it stabilized really, really well. So I would go with a medium to a heavy weight. Now, here's a little trick, and I've done this many, many times. Don't go out and buy a whole bolt of heavyweight because it only comes in bolt or yardage or whatever if you have lightweight in your stash of stuff just double it just put two layers of it okay it's it's usually like it doesn't have a grain on it like this does not have a grain on it it's so just put two layers iron one layer down let it cool put another layer on it that is the equivalent of doing a heavyweight a medium to heavyweight interfacing all right it's going to give you the same effect don't go out and buy extra extra uh interfacing if you don't have to because i generally use lightweight for just about everything so um all right so let's get started i'm going to shift the camera down so you can kind of see what i'm doing all right so excuse the reach remember we keep it real around here we have no cameramen All right, so, and you're gonna need some super strong thread and needle, okay? I would go with a hand quilting thread or like a denim thread or something that is going to be super strong because we are going to be pulling on it. So, make sure your fabric is ironed. Steam, steam, steam. I love steam, you know me. I'm waiting for my iron to warm up. There we go. Steam, 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 steam. Of course, I squirted steam all over. Front and back, nice crisp piece, or your, your um, cross stitch piece, all right? Do your interfacing. Glue side down. 
on the wrong side, on your back side, all right? I, I always just assume people know this stuff, but I, I, you know, you never know. So glue side to wrong side, you're putting your interfacing on the back side of your fabric. Okay. And that is uh, pretty much all we're going to use the iron for. So I'm going to kind of just move that out of the way so it's out of the way. Now, if you are working with a cross stitch piece, you are going to want to position your pattern over your stitch piece so that it is all balanced and everything is in that um, in that section. Okay, you don't want it all cattywampus. You want to line it up your center with your center. Um, your point with your point it, because you're going to be stitching it in a specific way to just be able to seam this together okay so you have to be very very careful when you're doing this with a cross stitch piece to make sure that everything lines up correctly okay so what I do but when I'm making these with just plain cotton just for decorative purposes I just take my pattern I drop a pin just old-fashioned pin in the pattern to the fabric all right you can pin it to front and back it doesn't matter it's, it's there's no there's no right or wrong way all right and then you just cut your cut your piece out and I cut right on the line very very easy okay all right so you have a pattern piece and this is what you have okay so you have your pattern piece it's all cut out you have your interfacing on the back what you're going to do next is you're going to fold this in on itself you're going to take those two straight edges you're going to have your curved side it's going to look like this and we are going to sew this straight edge make sure you do a lock stitch here and a lock stitch at the bottom i use a quarter inch seam allowance i live in a quarter inch world your pattern if you're doing the now not to change the subject i'm doing this on my machine if you're doing this with a cross stitch piece you could definitely definitely do this by hand and stitch this by hand so that you can get those that stitch exactly where you want that to line up okay you could even do this by hand here just do your running stitch um, if you're doing your cross stitch piece on your machine make sure you draw your sewing line where you want your sewing line to be so that it lines up perfectly with your stitching does that make sense so if your stitching is to meet here you know if they're supposed to meet at the back let me grab my little <clears throat> if they're supposed to meet back here and make a design you want to make sure that that's going to line up just so and that's where you could definitely just you know fold this in and then hand sew that closed okay so either way um but i'm just going to run this through the machine so you line this up and you sew this straight edge i'm just going to come over here and do this real quick because it takes like two seconds lock stitch quarter inch all the way to the bottom and lock stitch all right and this is what it's going to look like i always use contrasting threads so you guys can see all right trim off your corner trim off your threads and then we're going to turn this right side out And you're going to have like a cone all right 
use your poker 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 i love this poker now if you are going to do if you are going to do lizard litter or stuffed walnut shells this is where you want to put those in first and you're going to want to fill it up about two thirds of the way full and you're going to want to pack the, that lizard litter in there super super tight um Ivana Pfeiffer has a great a great tutorial on how she does hers with the lizard litter and she packs it in and then she says and when you feel like it's full pack some more in and that's exactly what you're going to do so I just kind of finger press this seam I don't get all I don't get all worried about that but I am going to stuff mine with just fluff all right so stuff it in there and you want this packed tight. This is not something that you want a loose pack on. So pack it nice and tight. And this fluff can be a little, it wants to be fluffy. So you want to pack it in there as tight as you can, okay? And it doesn't take a whole lot. Well, it, it all depends on the size of your strawberry, I suppose. Pack it in. Pack, 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 pack. And you're gonna you're gonna have an opportunity to come back and pack it some more if you if you so choose. Okay. So I pack it in there. Nice and tight and it's gonna bounce back at you all right so you're gonna kind of just hold it I just hold it and I have my needle and thread all loaded all right and what you're gonna do is you're gonna do a running stitch around this so I have my and it does not have to be fancy by any means because you're gonna be doing this one-handed just kind of pull it Got it not in there. That's all right. And you just do a running stitch all the way around. And around. And it's going to want to pull in on you. That's okay. Let it. Let it kind of do its thing. Because we're going to go around it a couple of times. We're not just going to go around it once. Um, I find when I go around things just once, they're not ever as tight as I want it to be. So pretend you're doing a yo-yo. Um, just run in stitch. All the way around. All the way around. It takes a few minutes. Okay, so I'm back to where I started from, all right? And give this a little pull. Now, this is your opportunity, if you want to stuff this more, to stick some more stuffing in there. All right, because you've got it kind of, kind of under control. So if you wanted to put more in there, like this, now is the opportunity. All right, it takes a little fiddling around. And then you're kind of pulling, you're kind of pulling those two threads, you're doing a gather, okay? Pull it. This is why you need a nice tight thread. Mine always breaks on me. So I'm just waiting for the snap. Okay, so what I do is at this point, I kind of have it, see how I have it? It's not tight enough, but I don't want, I don't want to let loose. So I'm kind of just taking a knot here.
and I'm going to kind of, yeah, it, it's a little bit of a, you're kind of just pulling it, okay? You're pulling and squishing, pulling and squishing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my needle and thread and just kind of do a rough, another rough gather stitch all the way around and keep tightening it because I don't want that thread to break. If you yank on it too much, it snaps, you swear, you cry, you throw it across the room, you vow that you're never gonna do another running stitch and you just can't make strawberries, but you can, okay? <laughs> See now, now as I'm kind of pulling and gathering and doing that and just kind of keep going around and around and pulling, And then you don't snap your thread and then you're not unhappy. Everybody's happy. And you just keep going around. Hopefully my digits aren't too much in the way. And you just keep going around. And pull. And round and pull. Round. Pull, and it's going to get tighter and tighter and you don't have to try and do it all at that single way this is all going to get covered up it doesn't have to be beautiful all right so I'm kind of back to the beginning where I have my first tail and you can kind of tighten that and then tie knot tie knot Tie knot. Make sure it's nice and secure. Okay? And now I could have stuffed my point a little bit more, but that's all right. So now you have your strawberry shape. How cute is that? Now the fun part. <clears throat> uh, you can add little bows and ribbons like this. This one, I want to add a little leaf. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my felt or my wool and I'm going to cut cut a leaf or two and so all I did was cut a leaf uh, do I like it yeah I kind of like it maybe I want two get creative and this is primitive they don't have to be perfect all right so now I want two so I have two, and I'm just going to stack those on there. I have not unthreaded my needle and thread. I've not unthreaded any of that, all right? I'm going to stitch one on here. I'm just going to come up. And stitch. It doesn't have to be pretty just has to be secure. So get that secured on there like that. Okay, then bring your other one over. Mm, I like it like that better. Hey, okay? how cute is that? <clears throat> bring this up through that. Secure that in place. And what you're doing is you're covering up that pucker. You're covering up all those stitches that you just made to try and get that, to get that, um, to pucker up and to, to be nice and secure. See, it's not pretty. It's, it's not pretty, but it's nice and secure at this point. All right. Your leaves are on there. How cute is that? So you take a couple stitches and then I don't know if I want the green button. You can add a green button or if I want the tan button. I think I want the tan button. How cute is that? And this is where you just sew your button on top and you just come up. Now at this point, I would knot this off and probably use a matching thread. All right. And this is where I make sure my button is placed to cover up 
Oh, my, all oh my threads. Sorry, I went off camera there for a second. You make sure that it's all kind of placed to cover up any imperfections. Okay. And you can add more than one button. You can decorate these however you want. Now, this is where you would want it if you wanted to add a tie or a loop. And it takes a little bit. You might want to get a larger needle. I don't have a really large needle going on here, and my fingers are super dry. Loop. <laughs> Slippery little bugger. <laughs> and you just keep coming up until everything is nice and secure and the way you want it, okay? And you sometimes have to wiggle it around to get it the way you want it to be. And see now I've got to cover this up. So I'm going to bring this stitching back here so that it's secure back here too. And so that it stays kind of in place where I want it to stay. All right, so. Let me get my. Well. All right. So now I have my, my button on there. And it's a little crooked. You know, it's hard when you're doing it backwards and for the camera and stuff like that. But tie your button off. Tie your knot. Make sure everything is nice and secure. You still have that other tail. Make sure everything is nice and secure. It's going to all just kind of be in place. And then snip your thread. Boy, I'm just uh, like all over the place with this today, aren't I? It's just bouncing around. And you snip your threads. And there you have a strawberry. And now you can decorate this any way you want. Like I said, I like doing them with the little ribbons. This one is with the little um, button and the leaves. And in fact, these leaves are probably a little bit bigger than I want them to be. So I'm going to trim it back just a bit. See, you can always change your mind. Nothing, nothing has to stay the same way. Or you could do leaves all the way around. I've seen that too. And to do that, what I would do is I would do something to this effect where you would take, <clears throat> let's do this. So what I would do is I would take a circle of felt, just a circle like this. See how it's kind of quite a bit bigger. And then I would just kind of do a, a like a, A wiggly cut around it. So that it kind of looks like a leaf. And then you could put it right on top and then put your button on top of that. So there's lots and lots of ways of decorating your strawberry. So I'm going to slide this camera up a little bit so that we can we can chat again. There we go. So there's lots of ways you can decorate your strawberries. Okay. If you go on Pinterest, if you go online, if you look at other people's strawberries, there's all sorts of ways. Um, they're super cute. Like I said, you could definitely even just cut your, um, your felt or your, um, wool to look like this. You put your button on top. Sometimes I've even gone with like a really pretty, like a brooch on top, especially if it's something that I've given away as a gift and the brooch has a meaning to, to the person I'm giving it to. You can put a brooch on it and then make it into a pin cushion for them so that, you know, when they look at it, they have it's sentimental to them too. You can make these for Christmas trees. How cute would these be for um, little Christmas tree ornaments? You can make them in Christmas colors. Like I said, I love these. 
I have a, a little bit more primitive decor, so I love the stripes. You can, there's so many things you can do with them. Leave me a comment below. Let me know how you would make your strawberry and how you would decorate them because I don't, I'm not the only one giving you guys inspiration. You guys also give me inspiration. So when I post these tutorials and you give me ideas back, I, those light bulbs go off for me too. And it is just absolutely wonderful. And then it just gives me all sorts of, it just opens the floodgate of creativity for me. And it's going to open the floodgates of creativity for everybody who reads the comments. So don't keep your ideas to yourself. Let them out freely. Um, everybody appreciates it. And I'm just showing you the technique on how to make it. And we can go out to the world from there. So if you're loving the tutorials and loving having me come into your home every day, please hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment. Let me know if you're new here, how you found me, who recommended you, um, if you just stumbled across me. I'd love to welcome you. For everybody who's been with me from the very, very beginning, you are all my favorite viewers and my favorite stitchers. You are my family. So when you're out in the world, please be kind. Spread love and find peace.